Design and manufacture is all about successful product design. What makes a good product? How has it been made? What are the key design decisions that have been faced during the design and manufacture of the product? A large chunk of the course is concerned with materials and manufacturing. This video is to do with the other aspects of the course. The topics covered have been selected due to the frequency these topics come up both in N5 and the higher D&M course. As you become more and more familiar with the content, try pausing the video and seeing if you can list the key points from each section before I discuss them. The first part concerns design or impact on the environment. In an exam, you will be asked to discuss ways in which the designer can have a less harmful impact on the environment. Therefore, it will be important to structure a response in order to demonstrate your understanding. You will be familiar with this emblem. It stands for Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, and this will form a good basis for the structure of your answer. If we take these one at a time, Reduce, Packaging, the designer can make a conscious effort to lower the amount of packaging used in their products. Think Easter eggs. The amount of packaging has been lowered significantly in recent years. This means fewer resources are being used, but it also means that you can get more product onto your transport. Think IKEA. The more units that can be fitted onto transport, the fewer lorries on the road. Reduce emissions. Can we reduce emissions from our transport as well as create greener factories? Reduce carbon footprint. Looking at the whole design, make and distribute process, can we work out ways to create less strain on the environment? Reuse. Can we reuse useful parts? It would be worth googling circular economy. This is a way of designing and owning products which puts the emphasis on sending back products to the manufacturer so that they can reuse useful components within the product. Recycle. Use recycled materials. This will ensure that fewer raw materials are being used in the manufacture of products. Plastics are made from oil, which is a fossil fuel. To discover the oil, drill for oil, ship oil to refineries, refine the oil, ship it elsewhere, and turn it into plastics uses a huge amount of energy and pollutes the environment. And that's before any disasters due to oil spills along the way. You can also encourage the user to recycle. If consumers are encouraged to recycle more and see the need for this, this will also have a big impact on the amount of raw materials we use in products. Rethink. Design for disassembly. Make it easier for users uh, to repair and replace parts. If a part fails in an appliance, how easy is it to fix? Or due to difficulty in finding parts or access, users may be more likely to just chuck the product out. Planned obsolescence. Products are still made to this day which the manufacturer knows will only last a short period of time before being replaced. This will drive sales so long as the user doesn't begin to see the brand as being unreliable. The other side of planned obsolescence is deliberately holding technology back. We'll cover this more later in this video. Computers in design. The use of computers in design has revolutionized product design. They have many benefits and allow us to generate ever more elaborate designs. You'll be expected to discuss the various benefits and weaknesses of using computers, CAD, during the design process. Speed. Quick representations of design versus hand-drawn. Changes to design can also be made more easily. Realistic. Useful for use with clients to give them a better idea of the design. The client may not be able to read complicated drawings. Compatible with CNC machining and rapid prototyping. Sharing. Ideas can be sent around the world by email to different members of the design team. Testing. Allows for stress testing or aerodynamic testing to be simulated rather than building prototypes. Cost. Skilled staff are expensive. The computers themselves cost a lot and need upgrading. The software used also costs a lot of money for the licenses. They can also crash, losing time and work, and there is a possibility of the machine being hacked, losing data to competitors. Market research. Market research is used to ensure that products are developed to meet users' wants and needs, as well as ensuring they are more desirable than a competitor's product. There are many different ways to gather this research. User test. A one-off test asking the user several questions as they use the product. 
Questions asked will be related to design issues. Do you think the card is long enough? Is it easy to operate? User trial. A test run over a longer period. Usually used to test whether a product will show a drop in performance or to identify durability issues. Does a vacuum cleaner lose suction over period, for example? Focus group. A group of consumers brought together from the same target market. Specific views and opinions will be gathered. Could be to do with issues such as aesthetics or specific function a product is required to do. Mood and lifestyle boards. A collection of images used to try and get in the head of the target market you are designing for. What are their likes and dislikes, interests and hobbies? Can we use this knowledge to make a product more appealing to this group? Product comparison. Analyse a competitor's product to see if there is any unique aspect to the design or technology. This could be improved upon to try and make a product more appealing. Test rig. A product is tested over and over by a machine designed to simulate use over a long period of time. This would give the designer an idea of how their products are likely to last and then can be used to work out product warranties. Idea generation. A designer always wants to produce unique designs. Idea generation techniques are used to design creative ideas which haven't been seen before. There are many types and we'll look at three. One important thing to remember is that sketching is not an idea generation technique and won't pick up any marks. Morphological analysis. A simple form is twisted, stretched, pulled or widened, morphing it into a new form. Scamper. Shapes are added, subtracted and multiplied to together to create more interesting forms. Walk the pencil. Interesting shapes are pulled from a path drawn by the pencil. Modeling. You will need to know what types of model a designer uses and when they will be likely to use them. Sketch. Quick models made during the initial concept stage. These give the designer a quick idea of how the design looks and can be used as a talking point between colleagues. Block models. Used primarily to check anthropometrics. Used during the development stage, these are made from block materials such as foam and MDF. Prototype models. A working, fully functioning model made prior to manufacture. All problems should be worked out by this stage to ensure there are no faults with the final product. Presentation models. A model used to promote the design to clients. These are used as a selling tool. This can be either a physical model or a CAD model. Aesthetics. When considering aesthetics, it's important to remember it's not just about how a product looks. 1. Describe the shape of the product, lines, angles, curves. Describe what you see and why it would be appealing to the consumer. 2. Style. Is it modern, futuristic, old-fashioned, etc.? Link this to the appeal to the consumer, e.g. some people like old-fashioned looking products. Contrast. Contrast is all to do with opposites and how this impacts on the design or informs the consumer how to use it. It comes in three forms, contrasting shape, colour and texture. Contrast is usually used to inform the user of how to use the product. Think Bop It. The different colours and shapes tell you that each button performs a different function. Similarly, a different texture may let the user know that the product is expected to be held in a certain way. Planned obsolescence. If a technology becomes obsolete, it no longer has a use. It usually happens when more advanced technology comes along. Think VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. Holding technology back. Researching and developing new products costs a lot of money. Apple spent $14 billion in three months on research and development alone. So as not to be continually overstretching, companies such as Apple will drip feed technology out. Think camera phones. The pixel count has been steadily increasing as the next gen phone is released. This makes the previous model seem outdated by the consumer who may begin to feel their phone is inadequate. The other side of planned obsolescence is planning for the product to fail. This happens less so nowadays. It used to be the case that products were intentionally designed to fail after a certain amount of time. 
the consumer would be forced to buy a new product, hence driving sales. A balance needs to be struck between making money by selling these products, but also ensuring that there's not a consumer backlash as they become annoyed by constant upgrades or the product failing. Technology push, market pull, push. When a new technology is developed, the consumer will have no idea it even exists. The manufacturer has to convince the user that the new tech is worth shelling out for. For example, MP3s. The consumer would have to be convinced of the reason to move from CD players to MP3 players such as iPods. They would use advertising, product placement and celebrity endorsements to try to convince people to make the switch. Sometimes the consumer is less sure if the switch is really necessary. For example, with the DVD to Blu-ray switch. The consumer will ask themselves, is it really necessary to switch? Pull. When the consumer gets a test of this technology, they want more and more from their product. In the case of the MP3, the consumer would no longer be happy with a 1 gig storage and would demand more space. This demand would pull the technology along as the manufacturer knows that it will need to keep developing, otherwise they may lose out on future sales. The iPhone suffered a drop of sales between the 4 and the 5 as consumers began to feel they were not seeing enough progress. Ergonomics Ergonomics is guaranteed to come up both in the M5 and higher. This is due to the fact that it's such an important consideration for all designers when designing products. Ergonomics is all about the ways in which humans interact with products. This happens in three ways. Anthropometrics. Anthropometrics is all to do with human sizes and ensuring that the product is operated safely and performs its function as expected. When answering questions regarding anthropometrics, you must first name a body part, e.g. hand width, grip size, finger length, arm length, etc. Crucially, you must then relate this to the product and state why the size is important. E.g., the grip size would have to be considered in order for the child to hold onto the handlebars firmly and steer the bike safely. Psychology. Psychology concerns how a product makes the user feel. Whenever you talk about psychology, you must link this to an emotion as well as explaining how the user will interpret this mental cue. E.g., when the pen lid clicks, the user feels confident that the lid is on the pen and won't dry out. Or, a parent must feel happy and secure in the knowledge that a buggy is not going to collapse while in use. Psychology can also inform us how to use the product. For example, the red button on the remote tells us that this is probably how you turn the device off. We would not need a manual for this instruction. Physiology is all to do with the physical interactions a user makes with the product. When answering these questions, it's often useful to imagine yourself using the actual product. Anytime you use a muscle, when operating, this is a physiological interaction, e.g. lifting the boppet, flicking, pushing, pulling, etc. The designer needs to ensure that the force required to operate the product is appropriate to whoever it's designed to be used by. For example, a child's push-along trolley will need to, be very, need to have very little resistance in the wheels, whereas a medicine bottle with a safety cap should only be able to be used by an adult.